Well, hello there, this is Shane from Shane's Reviews and I hope you are having a great day today. Forgive me if I look a little askew or if I got something on my shirt. It's been one of those days and it's not a bad day, it's just a work day and I wanted to make sure that I got this recorded before the storms and everything so that it would be ready for the editor's scrap to take care of uh, tomorrow morning because the storms are supposed to start rolling in sometime soon. Anyway, the long and the short is, today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. All Systems Red, that was wrote by Martha Wells, and it was narrated, narrated by Kevin R. Free. And this one is a fairly short read uh, whenever it comes to Audible. It's only about three hours long. But the reason why I'm bringing it up, it has to do with the, well, the subject matter, really. Because... A lot of books that I've read in the past that has to do anything with space or with like military drama-esque type things, uh, it, there's a very particular space of which the person writing the story is looking at, right? And, and this one's a lot different because it's wrote from the perspective of a unit that is a security guard. So it's a SG unit or SEG or SEC. I'm not sure because I don't have a physical copy. But the long of the short is that it's wrote from that device's perspective on what is happening as the story is unfolding around it. And we also get a lot of backstory type components that I usually find lacking in the first book, especially if it's a series book. So there's that as well. And it kind of took me aback that the author was like so free and clear with this stuff because Usually it's not so forthcoming. And it's not like a spoon feed either. It's, it's one of those things where you're left to wonder why on a couple of things. Some things are explained, some things are not explained. But it's really interesting to see the way that the story is told because the unit has a fear of being out of its armor around humans, which sounds incredibly odd. But these this device, it's it's no different than, let's say, the, the books that I've been going through here recently, the, like the Silver Ships, right? The Sades, they're AI units. They know that they're not human, but it, there's not a lot of difference there between those characters with the exception of the story is wrote from that character's perspective. Now, in the Silver Ships, the AIs or the Sades, they're, they're really well described. They have characteristics that make them incredibly relatable. Uh, but from the get-go, you can tell that this device, this being isn't going to necessarily be like a human would be in a lot of situations because it's got its own directives it's got its own things that it's supposed to do and not do like it's you know run it out to these people and it knows it's run it out to these people and the corporation that is responsible for renting out the entire like situational base to them which includes the drones maintenance and that of course they're getting all the data from these people because this one unit is able to record everything so no matter if you're in your bedroom or asleep or awake or in the common area no matter where you are it is getting everything that you say out loud and then of course there's that little nod to like social media marketing where it's like yes we do get it all and yes we do sell it all do we tell anybody that we do it no does everybody know that we do it yes is there a thing that you can do about it no uh, so it's really aware <laughs> this book of particular things. And that was something that really kind of caught my attention. Um, I'm not gonna say this isn't a book that I wouldn't have gravitated to on my own at one point or another. I may have actually done it. It just so happened that I was in a pinch. I was looking for something that was a quick read to listen to while I was going to take care of things. And this was under, well, it was right at the three hour mark. And I was like, okay, fine. It's got a lot of reviews. I'll check it out. And could it have been better? Maybe, but not really. I think that the way that it was wrote, the way that it ended, the way that the characters interact with each other is very honest and to itself. I don't see a whole lot of problems with the way that the characters were interacting with each other because from the situation of the group that are there feel like there's some type of saboteur or sabotage going on. And this being, the security being, knowing that the humans are suspecting it of doing all this stuff and the way that this all accumulates it was really it was told well there wasn't a moment where I was left scratching my head going but I thought you there was none of that so for that I applaud thank you very much 
um, for your efforts in writing a very direct, straightforward story. And it is enjoyable. It does have all the components of sci-fi. Uh, we've got a little bit of hacking, a little bit of sabotage, a whole lot of space ish because they're on a different planet and then also you know what if the corporation that you're buying a land or a planet or a piece of land on a planet to do mining on is completely not honest about what's going on on that planet so that made for a very interesting read because it wasn't only just the story of mankind or person kind versus the elements or versus alien threat or versus this it was a little bit of paranoia <laughs> it was a little bit of what's really going on here and trying to figure it out. So there was a mystery wrapped up in this that I'm not gonna tell you if it gets solved or not, but the way that everything was presented, it was really well done. The characters are highly relatable in between the, the captain or the medical personnel or whatnot, because all these people, they, they have a function inside of this group of which they are in and it shows the the characters were well used by the author which is something i can't really say about a lot of books they'll mention that the person is good for this one thing that they are specialized in but then there's no follow-through but that's not the case with this that each person has their own little thing and that comes in play at one point or another so i incredibly enjoyed this i liked it i think i'm going to continue it if you guys and gals are interested in it i would love to have your opinions of course you know down there in the and the thing that YouTube has made really hard to get to because for whatever reason. So I would say, is it worth your time, efforts, and energies? I think so. I think that uh, most people, whenever they pick this up, it might be a little bit off-putting at first, but if you give it a minute to 30, then it'll start to pay off. And especially <laughs> the emotional stuff that this unit is going through as it is trying to just simply eke its way through to the next job. That's, that's one of the things that was so relatable to me, was just seeing how it was trying to relate to the others, how it was trying to hold its hand against the others on its emotions and what it was feeling. And it really didn't want them to know that it was just as afraid of them as they were of it. Question of the week, I gotta know. Because there's one thing that was prevalent throughout the book that wasn't like an ongoing joke or anything like that, but it was it had this governor that was supposed to inflict pain or teach it lessons on you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do this, or if you break a directive or whatever, then it was supposed to be punished. Well, it figured out a way to get rid of that. You know, if you were in that situation and you had the knowledge, would you do that so you could do whatever you wanted without fear of repercussion? Because I mean, really as, as humans, that's a thing that we need is that fear of repercussion, repercussion to keep us from doing something that we shouldn't do in the first place. Like whenever you get that filling in the pit of your stomach that says, if you do this, you know it's going to go bad and then you do it anyway and then you feel stupid for doing it anyway and you should have listened to your gut in the first place. Myself, I listen to my gut. My gut tells me a lot and unfortunately for a while it was lying to me and telling me I needed to eat a lot of food I didn't need to eat. If you haven't noticed, 60 pounds I have lost since November, holy cow. Anyway, so that's the question. If you could disable that device, would you do it? And would you use your own sense of morality or would you just go all fancy free and footloose and wreak havoc on the world? I'd love to know, tell me down there. I'm actually genuinely curious on this one because I would love to see some of the answers some of you guys and gals would have. So thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far, you're my personal hero. Congratulations for that. That's an honor into itself. And seriously, I, it does help a lot. Uh, and speaking of helping, if you saw anything in here that you liked, make sure you hit the little like button. Or if you want to make fun of us and send it out to all your friends, feel free to hit that share button and do just that. Uh, in the meantime, I don't know which one of the two videos you will pick that's coming in from over there. But if you pick that one, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.